Incoming interesting research on Roboruski. I recently read a paper called Lunar and Temperature Effects on Activity of Free Living Desert Hamsters, Photopus Roboruski. Reference is on the screen and in the description below. This paper is really interesting as it provides further insights into the Roboruski in the wild. Robos in the wild are quite mysterious and there's not that much research on them and that's why I was keen to explore this research paper. So I thought I would summarise the research and chat about it with you. This study explored the activity patterns of wild Roboruski hamsters in their natural habitat within the Alishan Desert of Inner Mongolia, China, over the summers of 2009, 2010 and 2012. The objective was to understand the impact of lunar phases, ambient temperature and soil temperature on the nocturnal activities of Roboruskis. So they looked at three factors, lunar phases being the portion of the moon visible and therefore how light it is at night, so moonlight, ambient temperature which is the temperature of the air around the hamsters and the soil temperature. And they wanted to see if these three factors impact the behaviour of Roboruski hamsters in terms of their activity outside their burrows, the length of their foraging expeditions and the time spent inside their burrows at night. To do this, they captured individual Roboruski hamsters in the field and marked them with passive transponders. They then put microchip readers and photosensors in the Roboruski's burrow to detect movements in or out of the burrow, which would allow for precise tracking of the hamster's activities. My understanding is that a passive transponder is like a microchip that you have put into your dog, which can be scanned for identification, obviously on a much smaller scale. So the microchip readers in the burrow would presumably be able to tell which hamster had just entered or left the burrow. I'm not sure if these microchips would impact the well-being of the hamsters, presumably they would be left in the hamsters for life. Once they had done this, they would release the Roboruski and one person would follow the Roboruski back to its burrow so they knew where to begin monitoring it. They of course also measured temperatures and lunar phases. So what did they find? They found that the Roboruski's above ground activities were indeed influenced by the size of the moon with an increase in the length of activity correlating with larger moon disk sizes. They attributed this to earlier onset times of activity during the nights with a larger visible moon. They also found that foraging excursions lasted longer during periods of fuller moonlight. Temperature of both the air and the soil also influenced the Roboruski's activity. Higher temperatures were associated with shorter periods of activity. So the moon and the temperature affect the activity of Roboruskis. This shows that changing climate will of course impact Roboruskis. It also shows how amazing Roboruskis are adapting to the very harsh environment they live in, so beautifully designed. Okay. Okay, so what else is interesting about this study? There were three other things I noted that were of interest. The first is that the researchers got their data partly by counting number of times the Roboruskis went in and out of their burrow during the night and day. If a Robo spent less than a minute outside of the burrow, they did not measure this as them going out. They had found from pre-trials that the Roboruskis sometimes go in front of their burrow entrance to perform a vigilance behaviour, which I thought was was very interesting. So they are going out to check for predators, making sure that they're aware of their surroundings. The second thing I found interesting is that the article mentions diet of Roboruskis and that they forage for parts of plants and insects with insects being especially important due to their high water content. They found that insects could make up 50% of the diet of Roboruskis, which is something I've not seen in research before. And the suggestion is that this is because insects contain a lot of water. So it would make sense that in the summer they would eat a lot more food with high moisture content so that they would stay hydrated. Also interesting, they did not find evidence of food storage in the Roboruskis burrows during the summer, although they did find what I'm assuming is is discarded parts of insects and they also found nesting materials. And finally, they also found that Roboruski has changed their burrows quite often, so they would use a burrow for four to ten days. The Roboruskis didn't need to store a lot of food in the summer, but would collect food for short periods of time, meaning they could reduce their foraging activity. And that is my summary. I found this so interesting and I hope you did too. I have linked the paper in the description for anyone who would like to read it in more detail. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.